In this video, we're going to discuss the different things to look for when you're inspecting the parts of the T90 transmission. It's understandable that a lot of people want to replace most of the parts when they take one apart. However, I think you'll find that the transmission is a little more robust than most people give it credit for. So we're going to start with the case today and walk our way through the parts of the transmission and tell you what to look for on each of them. All right. The first part you're going to want to inspect are these four ears to make sure that they're not broken off. You have to have those in order to be able to connect up to your bell housing. So if those four, any of those four ears are broken, this is a case you don't want to use. Next thing you're going to want to inspect are these three holes right here. Those three holes are for attaching your bearing retainer. If those holes are stripped out, you're going to have to repair, either repair those threads or get yourself a different case. The next thing to inspect is this lower hole that you see right here. That hole is for your counter shaft. If that hole is oversized, your counter shaft is going to leak profusely. So, you want to make sure that when your counter shaft, the small end of your counter shaft fits into that hole, it fits in it rather snug. Otherwise, you're going to leak profusely. As it is, I still tend to seal that hole when I put in my cluster gear. The next part I inspect for are the ears on the back of the transmission that attach to the transfer case. You've got one ear here, one ear here. These other ones, if you've broken those off, you've kind of shattered the case, so don't worry too much about those three. But these two ears right here have a tendency to snap off, especially this one right here. People tend to forget it when they're taking apart the, trans the transfer case because the bolt comes in from the front, and they try to separate the transmission and transfer case, and they snap off this ear because they haven't removed the bolt. If those are all good, next you're going to move to the rear hole for the counter shaft. On the rear hole, the small end should fit in pretty well, but then the large end of the counter shaft should be very snug and you should have to drive it into the hole. So if that's oversized because somebody drove it through the wrong way, you don't want to use that case. The next part you're going to want to look at is going to be the hole for the reverse idler counter shaft. Make sure that your counter shaft fits in there nice and snug. While you're at it, go ahead and look at the inside boss, which we'll get to that easier. There, can you see it now? Going to get to the inside boss, make sure that that's not broken off. If that's broken off, you have an unusable case. The reverse idler shaft should fit right in there. All right. Next, you're going to want to look at the bottom of the case. You've got these mount bolt holes here. These tabs here have a tendency to get broken off. If they get broken, then you won't be able to mount the transmission to the um, transmission mount. So make sure that these two tabs here are not broken off and that all four holes have good threads. Go ahead and chase the threads on all of them. Next, you're going to want to look at these holes at the top of the case. These are the bolt hole mounts for your shift tower. Make ch Chase the threads, make sure the threads are all cleaned out and ready to go. But also what happens is people try to make their shift tower quit leaking by tightening the bolts down tighter and tighter and tighter until what they do is they stretch the threads on these holes. Okay, Once you've stretched those, hole, those threads up out of those holes a little bit, from now on, you're never going to get a good solid seat down from your shift tower. So if you feel that they're up just slightly, just take a file, lay it flat on the case, and run it along them until you've removed that raised area. And it's a good idea to check the rest of that seating area to make sure that you don't have any places where somebody's hit it with a hammer or anything and bent up an edge. Anything that's like that, you want to 
smooth it down. But you want to lay that file perfectly flat on there. You don't want to come at it at angles or anything or you'll gouge holes in it and you won't be able to clean those up or fix those later. One last thing to look for on the outside of the case is going to be the fill port and the drain port. Check the threads, make sure they're clean. Remember those are not a regular thread, those are going to be a pipe thread, so don't be using any regular type of uh, tap to run down in there. It's going to have to be a uh, pipe thread. All right, so make sure that those are clean, make sure that they're not damaged. If you got all that good, now you're ready to move to the inside of the case. This right here is the riding area for the front side of your cluster gear. This area right here should be perfectly smooth. And what you're going to find a lot of times is these are going to be gouged out really bad with a lot of lines cut in it in circular pattern where the washer that was supposed to sit in there, this washer right here with the little tab, and what happens either people put them in, put in washers that don't have a tab or that tab shears off and then the washer spins on the mount and it gouges big holes in there. Well once that area, surface area has been gouged out real bad it can be fixed, but it's not economical to fix it. T90 transmission cases are way too easy to find to spend that kind of money on trying to fix it. Now we're going to move to the opposite end. This is the rear of the transmission. See this tab right here? This tab right here is essential to the operation of this transmission. If it shears or breaks off, or is removed, you either need to find a way to replace it by brazing or welding something in there, or as one of the people on my list here recently did, they drilled a hole and installed a roll pin here. Another method may be to drill it all the way through, thread it, and put a countersunk head bolt in from the other side. Either way, you need this tab. What the tab does is it locks this washer right here so that it can't rotate. It'll hit back here and it'll hit right here. It allows it to s turn slightly, but it doesn't allow it to free spin around and around and around. If it free spins, again, it's going to gouge out big grooves in this surface area. If that surface area is gouged, it's time to replace the case. One last part to look at is this surface right here. All right, you're going to want to look at it and this upper surface up here. Those are the surfaces that your reverse idler gear will ride on. And you need to make sure that it's a fairly snug fit, not a lot of play, and uh, that those areas aren't chewed up. That is pretty much all that you're going to need to see on the standard top load T90 transmission. We talked about the top load transmission, but now what if you have a side shifted T90? Well, the side shifted T90 has two shift rails that fit through from the inside. Like so. As long as they fit snugly, these bosses are good. However, you're still going to need to change out these two seals when you rebuild it. The next part on the top on the side shift to T90 transmission is this boss right here. That boss is included in both the top shift and side shift just like those side bosses are. However, on the side shifted transmission, this is drilled out and it has a pin that fits through it, which is loaded with a spring and poppet balls. Those prevent you from shifting into two gears at once 
This has to fit very snugly in the chamber. If it doesn't, you're going to need a new, either a new piece here or you're going to need to replace the transmission case.